With the release of Civil 3D 2018, we now have access to features that were once only available within the intersection wizard. I'm speaking of dynamic offset profiles and connected alignments. We'll look at dynamic offset profiles first. On my screen, I have some geometry that represents the beginnings of a proposed roadway design. Let's take a quick tour. I'm going to zoom in on the left. Right here, I have a surface called EG. This represents the existing ground. Here, I have an alignment called Brickville Road. This is the center line for my proposed roadway design. If I pan over to the right, we will find a profile view called Brickville Road Profile View. And this profile view contains a pair of profiles. One is the sampled existing ground surface profile, and the other is the finished grade profile for the Brickville Road center line. I'm going to restore the screen by double clicking the mouse wheel to do a zoom extents. Now let's split the screen in half. I'm going to do that by opening this leftmost in canvas menu. I'll come down to viewport configuration list and I'll take this all the way over to side by side. This is a viewport configuration I created earlier to make it a little easier to view our plan and profile together. I'd like to start by defining an offset alignment here on the right side of Brickville Road. Let's assume this represents the proposed edge of pavement. To create the offset alignment, here on the Home tab, I'll come up to the Create Design panel. I'll open the Alignment menu, and I'll come down and choose Create Offset Alignment. I will then select my parent alignment. And in the dialog box, right here, we can see the alignment we're offsetting from. Right here, I can name my offset alignment. In this case, we'll keep the parent alignment name, and I'll append EOP right. I'd like my offset alignment to run from the beginning to the end of the parent alignment. I don't want any offsets on the left, so I'll set that to zero. I'd like one offset on the right, and we'll set its distance to 12 feet, a traditional lane width. Next, I'll assign the styles. For the alignment style, I'll choose Proposed Edge of Pavement, and then for the label set, I'm going to choose No Labels. So nothing new at this point. We've been able to create offset alignments for a while. What is new is this tab called Create Offset Profile. This allows me to define a dynamic offset profile that goes along with this offset alignment. You can see the features turned on by default. Since we're creating a profile that's based on another profile, right here we can choose the parent profile. In this case, my parent profile will be the finished grade centerline elevation. To visualize the profile, I can superimpose it into an existing profile view. Let's do that. I'll choose the Brickville Road profile view. And right here, we can define the geometry of that profile using a cross slope, just like how we do it in the intersection wizard. I'm going to keep the default of negative 2%. Here I can name my dynamic profile. I'm going to keep the alignment name, and I'll append FG to the end. And then for the style, let me open this up. I apologize, this is off screen. I'm selecting a style called Offset Right, and then I will click OK. Let's zoom in and take a look. Right here, we can see the offset alignment that we created. And then if I come down to the profile view, we can see superimposed in here is that dynamic profile that represents a negative 2% cross slope from the center line. Just for a second, let's take a look at where these new objects are stored. If I go to the Prospector tab and expand the Alignments category, if I open up Offset Alignments, right here is the offset alignment I just made. And if I drill down into that offset alignment, we'll find that dynamic profile. I say this profile is dynamic because it will update if the offset alignment changes. For instance, if I select this offset and then click the grip, we'll pull this out to change its measurement. You can see how that updates in the profile view. Let me go ahead and push this back. Now that I've made some changes, I'd like to set this lane width back to 12 feet. Since the alignment is selected, I'm going to come up in the contextual ribbon. I'll choose Offset Parameters, and we'll set the nominal offset here back to 12. I'll press Enter, and then I'll click the X to close this palette. I will then press Escape to deselect. Next, we'll look at how we can edit the cross slope of this profile. One way to make changes is to select the Offset Alignment, and then in the Contextual Ribbon, I'm going to choose Edit Offset Profile Properties. Here in the dialog box, I can change the name of that profile. I can change its style. You can see there are some traditional profile settings here on these other two tabs. Down at the end is a new tab called Offset Parameters. Right here, we can change the cross slope. I'm going to make this something that's obviously different. We'll make it negative 10%, and then I'll come down and click Apply. And you can see that change. Let's put this back to negative 2%, and I'll click Apply. So what I'm saying is, I'm starting at station 0 with a negative 2% cross slope, and I'm carrying that slope the entire length of the alignment. That being said, it doesn't have to be this way. I can define regions along this alignment, each having a unique cross slope. Let's try that. I'll come up and click the Add button to add a region. 
Let's zoom out and I'll pan the plan view over. I'd like to add a region at station 1 plus 0, 0. I'm just going to type 100 and I'll press enter. For my slope, I'll set that to negative 2%. Let's set another region at 150 and we'll use a slope that's significantly different. We'll make that negative 10. I will then go down to station 250. We'll make that negative 10%. And then we'll go to station 300 and we'll come back to negative 2%. When I'm finished defining regions, I'll press enter. So based on the entries, you can see that we are going to be carrying a negative 2% cross slope to station 100. And then from 100 to 150, we will transition to a negative 10% cross slope. I will then carry that slope to station 2 plus 50. And then from 250 to 300, we'll transition back to negative 2% and we'll carry that slope the rest of the alignment. Let me click OK. And if we click in the profile view and I pan this over, you can see that's reflected here. There's my negative 2%. There's my transition. There's my negative 10, and there's my transition back to negative 2. At this point, I'm going to press Escape to deselect the alignment. Let's look at one more way to edit the profile. I can also edit it over here in the Prospector. I'm going to right-click on that dynamic profile, and I'll choose Properties. From here, we'll go back to the Offset Parameters tab, and let's change these slopes from negative 10 to negative 5. When I'm finished making my changes, I'll click OK, and you can see that geometry update on screen. So using Civil 3D 2018, we can now create a profile that's dynamically linked to another profile. This opens up a ton of new possibilities when it comes to defining lane slopes or corridor targeting. Now that we understand how dynamic offset profiles work, we're ready to explore another new concept called connected alignments. And we'll do that in our next session. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.